what's up? This is Joel from Joel Does Music. Now, in this show, we have never, ever, ever interviewed international bands, but today is a first. This is one of my new favorite bands that I just magically discovered through the power of social media. I got the distinguished members of the band Conflict Hope. I got Molly. I got Jake. And I hope I'm saying this name correct, because if not, I'm not a proper Hispanic person. Ignacio. What's up, guys? Oh, hey, that's hey, good. Good. Result. That's very good. Did very, I say it correct? <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. Oh, my yeah, God. Thanks Thank for God. Thank you guys so much for hopping on this call. This is amazing. I just, like I said before, discovered you guys on Instagram. And I thought, wow, these songs have hooks. They just lure you in and then they just take you to the stratosphere. This is amazing stuff. Oh, thank, thank you so you. much. That's thank amazing. You so much. <laughs> and of course, another reason, which we will be discussing later on, Jake, you and Green Day, you performed with Green Day, I think at Billa Houston Park. That went viral. I hope you're aware of that, man. Yeah, I wasn't until the next day. And then I was like, why have we got like a few thousand followers? Like, what is going on? And then I was like, oh, they tagged us in the video. <laughs> it was like, yeah, it's been a very crazy month, a very strange month. I'm sure it has. I'm sure your life has changed so much within the past month. So I can't wait to get into that. But I definitely want to talk about the band Conflict Hope first. So I want to get a little bit of a backstory on you guys. Obviously, you have music out. You have Echo, Begin to Heal, and Petrified. But let's talk about how you guys first got together. If I'm correct, the band formed when you were all in high school, right? Yeah, yeah. that's right. Should we go from the very start? On, the, on you go. So it's actually, we started it just me and Jake and a couple other guys. I mean, we've had a million band members like throughout the years. But it started with me and Jake and we went for a few years. Jake used to actually be the lead singer. That's uh, why we got Molly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, we, we went for a few years and then... And then yeah. Jake and I, we kind of... Accident, well, I've known you since nursery. I mean, I didn't know you then, but it turns out we went to nursery yeah. at the same yeah. time, which is like preschool where you are. Um, and we in high school started a acoustic cover band like in pubs and stuff. And off the back of that, that's kind of why you... I mean, I think that's why you asked yeah, me to yeah. join. Mm-hmm. Or like, we need a really good singer. And I was like, I know a girl, so let's do it. <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, I mean, me and Astro have been, like, writing songs for years. So we're like, we yeah. just need, like, the perfect voice to kind of, to, like, perform them, I guess, in the right way. And thankfully, she's like, yes, so otherwise we'd be in a lot of trouble. I don't yeah. be here today, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's always been the three of you guys primarily, and then I'm sure for drummer and bass player, it's pretty much been a revolving door between those two members. Yeah, yeah. totally. We kind of... um we like just having like, I mean, if anyone else is in bands and stuff, you know, it's like people come and go and all that sort of stuff. So we kind of keep us like the three main members and when we feel live, you know, we get people in to come and help us out uh, when we're doing any gigs or whatever. So, uh, but we like to keep it just the same three members. It just makes it easier. It's just so much easier. Yeah. Um, that can turn into a situation where you have too many cooks in the kitchen. So the fact that it's just the three of you guys primarily as the main band members and the songwriters, I think it kind of makes everything a whole lot easier, if that's the right word. Totally. It was mainly just, see when bands have loads of members, like maybe five, six, it's really hard to get everyone together and make sure everyone's free at the same time. Um, so like narrowing it down to three, but it just makes everything so much easier. Um, so, yeah, it's been, like, one of yeah. the best things we've done, to be Definitely, honest. Definitely, yeah. Like, like you say, when there's, like... I mean, we're a very equal band. We kind of all of us sort of do everything. So, and, it, like, again, if you're we're quite, like... Everyone has, a like, their part to play in it. And if it's, as you say, like, the more people you have in, it takes a lot longer. We take long enough to write music yeah. as it is. So if there's another five people, it would take a long time, I think, so... Yeah, but it all works out in the end because you guys are making the band very democratic i think it works very well for you guys like no matter how long the music takes to come out the result is really worth it as it shows and petrified which cannot wait to get into man seriously but it's tough enough like you were saying before jake five six members it's like all right what's going on here you know totally absolutely i don't know how slipknot do they've got like 20 hundred <laughs> members um but i don't know how they've managed to do it but yeah We'll, we'll, we'll try and get, maybe we'll get to Slipknot numbers one day, but for now we're keeping it to me. 
absolutely so you guys are all the way in scotland are you where exactly in scotland are you from are you from dundee glasgow so we're from fife the band kind of well the three of us formed in dundee while we were all studying so a lot of our profile that is the closest city to where we are um we're kind of near st andrews like home of golf okay kind of way people know yeah. where we are <laughs> uh, but we're from a very rural place a tiny fishing town tiny essentially fishing town, with a couple yeah. of good chip shops and that's about it so we just oh wow sit in and play guitar all day that's amazing i'm all the way yeah. in a town in new jersey called east rutherford uh maybe you know this venue uh MetLife Stadium. It used to be called Giant Stadium. Obviously, you had Bruce Springsteen oh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. Absolutely. I mentioned Bruce Springsteen. You're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, man, that's, <laughs> that's all you need to know about New Jersey. Just MetLife Stadium. There you go. Iconic. We had the Stones here a couple of months ago. Absolutely. But, cool. So you're nearby Dundee, but you're not from there. But Dundee has, from what I have heard about recently, has a really rich music scene and it's really like locally renowned. I mean, you have a lot going on. I think there's like indie rock happening. There's pub rock. Um, there's some pop punk going on, I think, but not quite a lot. So how do you guys personally associate with your local music scene? Oof. Ooh. <laughs> that's, a good, that's a good question. Very good question. It's a thinker. Yeah. Um, I think we, well, so the producer of our songs, his band is like, they're from Dundee, don't they? They yeah, identify yeah, as yeah. that to kill Achilles. Um, and then everybody else, it's kind of just through socials and stuff. I know Dopamine, like we recently connected with Ish on um, Instagram. Um, because our gigs, I mean, we've only done one as the three of us. Like they yeah. usually end up in Glasgow or Edinburgh. So it's, it's tricky. You end up knowing, yeah, totally. like, associating or you know, mm. interacting with bands that are from where you end up playing rather than yeah. where we start. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think with the COVID is like before COVID. Um, I mean, when we were just like in school and everything, we were playing. I mean, we played in Dundee quite a lot, and then obviously COVID happened. And it kind of just made everything start fresh again. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, like you were saying, there's been there's lots of big big bands that sort of came from Dundee, like the um, the View. I think they were from Dundee. Yeah. They're kind of like the the big one. But I mean, there's on of bands like snow patrol were kind of about dundee and that as well so hopefully we'll add our name to the list that's cool though but eventually you guys will find your place it's all about just performing more local shows getting your name out there i mean i saw the post where you guys did a show recently and i think molly you said on instagram that people were singing back the lyrics i'm sure that was a moment where you thought holy hell what's going on here that was crazy that one's crazy. Yeah, I know. I think it's like, it's one of those moments, it's like, you like write music in like a room the size of a cupboard and then it's like, you don't really expect anyone to really hear it. Yeah. And then when you actually have people that are like, well, it's not just your mum, you're like, we've done it. Yeah. Done it. <laughs> it's such a fulfilling feeling. It's so, so moving. Like, it's like, cause we put so much into our music, obviously, like there's got a lot of time into it. It's yeah, it was on a really, really good gig. It was good. It's one. weird as well because like I always get this. I don't know about you guys, but see with social media and Spotify and stuff, like you see numbers, but it's it's weird thinking of those numbers as actual people yeah. Yeah. listening to songs and like actually, you know. Um, so like seeing it in person is just crazy experience. You know, it's just so overwhelming. But yeah, it's cool. It's cool. Yeah, I know. It's awesome. Yeah, it's always a dream for any local band or no matter where you are as far as like being a, a low tier band or if you're a medium level band or even like a top tier band, like that's always the goal. And it's always a dream where you're performing at gigs, you hear people singing back the song or just humming the melody to a sick guitar solo or a riff you're playing. It's like, this is what it's all about. This is what doing music is all about. Connecting with the people, just giving it our all really. 100%. Like, I think it's so weird as well because, like, I never, like, we just do that to our favorite bands. So you never think that, like, our band is going to be hopefully a band for someone else that they're going to sing along with and, like, yeah. connect with, like, lyrics and riffs and stuff like that. So, yeah, I mean, we go to gigs all the time and we're, like, just jumping around, like, singing. So then when you see someone do it to a song that you've written, it's, like, such a weird feeling. But, like, I mean, we're just so grateful. It's a, just the best feeling ever. It makes all the bad parts of being a band in this sort of time worth it without mm -hmm. a doubt. 100%. 
Absolutely. I mean, it's especially harder nowadays. And I've said this before in multiple videos before where you're kind of playing the numbers game with social media. You're trying to attract a certain number of followers on Instagram or TikTok. And then that's pretty much taken over like band imagery and performances. But you guys, I think, have a happy medium with numbers and performance. Like you're getting there in numbers. I mean, Jake, your viral moment, of course, which we'll talk about in a bit. And then the music, like, it's just so good. <laughs> I just had to bring it up. Like, come on, viral moment of 2024. But speaking about music, I definitely want to dig into your latest three songs. Echo, Begin to Heal, Petrified. First off, Petrified, when I woke up this morning, all I heard was, ba, 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 da, 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 da. <laughs> Who came up with that idea to start off Petrified with that? God, yeah, I, I think it was me. I think it was probably yeah. was, yeah. Yeah, it took a lot of drugs. I'm talking out of the drugs. Um, no, yeah, I, I just thought it was a very unique way. I remember it was actually, it's funny actually, it came from another song we were writing. It was going to be like a verse idea for like a backing vocal. Uh, and then I just, I like the idea as its own thing. So I started kind of messing around with it for like its own thing. Yeah. And I thought it was a very unique way to start a song with just like vocals and this like cat yeah. catchy sort of thing. There's a there's a really cool um Biffy Klein was sort of called the uh, Living is Problem because everything dies. He's got this really cool like instrumental thing at the start, and then they go into like some and it's like it's so cool, and everyone just sort of does it again, even though you can't sing it. You know, yeah. it's like it's so hard to sing. So yeah. that was probably an inspiration as well. Um, but and that's just a musical yeah. genius in this band, so yeah, for sure. And that, all, that started off with just chords, I remember. Yeah. Like, it had the catchy vocal thing, and it had chords, but then we just thought like. Let's just chuck a dirty riff in there. Yeah. And get groovy. To work. Go yeah. very groovy. Yeah. It's such a catchy song because it reminds me so much. Like, there are so many influences going on. Like, I hear bits of Queen in the beginning. I hear Biffy Clyro, actually. I hear Hailstorm and then a little bit of Evanescence. Like, just with the grooviness of the song. Like, it's heavier compared to the other two singles that you guys have out. But it's just so catchy. It just makes you bop your hair. You're like, okay, I vibe to it. It feels a little cinematic too <laughs> yeah totally. oh amazing that's exactly what we wanted that's not bad references as well yeah. like really really good so we'll happily be compared to those bands i don't know if that'll ever happen very much so we'll take it we'll take it well speaking about evanescence the song that really caught me off guard of course i say in a good loving way i was just like whoa what the hell happened here echo First off, that's more of like a pop punk feel to it. But Molly, the way your vocals just deliver throughout the entire song, it's like, all right, it's seducing you. It's bringing you in. And then all of a sudden, chorus kicks in. <laughs> the guitars come in. It's like up the stratosphere. Like, whoa, what the hell just happened? Talk to me about how you guys wrote that song. Go on, Jake. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, that was the, ver like, the original idea for that song. Like... A few years ago, and then we sort of. I remember writing the lyrics to that song in the back of your first car with an amp <laughs> against my head, and I was in the back seat like this. And I remember doing the lyrics, and I, so I remember that. And that was a few years ago, and then we showed it to Molly, and Molly made it a million times better with the vocals. Yeah. And then right before we recorded it, we're like, <laughs> Molly, we changed the whole song. Let's go. Literally the day <laughs> of, I came to your flat in Dundee, like water bottle ready. And my, that was my first time, like, in a proper like studio yeah. setting and we'd only met the guy once i think mm. and you're like oh by the way we've changed the whole, like, yeah. like this whole second verse and i think that, i can't remember what it was, it was literally there. all the verses i remember yeah, i think were, yeah because it was shorter because that was the first time we kind of sat down with someone who knew what they were doing like mark or yeah. producer in terms of like this will help for radio or no it's too long or take that bit out so it i think it was it's like a minute that got shaved off or something it's like yeah. down to three it's three minutes exactly yeah we have a habit of like overwriting quite a lot so we tend to just pack everything in our songs and then we kind of come with like a fresh set of ears and like sort of take away all the unneeded sort of bits yeah. so that's where mark our producer was really, really helpful for but it kind of tends to be that, that happens like how we write songs is like an answer or myself maybe come up with some bits of music and then we'll kind of write up together 
I'll do the lyrics and we give it to Molly and then Molly makes it sound and I change I'll it build, <laughs> yeah, I'll build it and you change it higher. and then yeah yes yeah. it's a lot of changing sort of like Oasis no? yeah like Liam like Noel would write yeah. the songs take them to Liam yeah, and then absolutely. Liam would make them good <laughs> No, all right. He's probably all right. He's doing so. <laughs> but it's such a great song, though. I mean, just the fact that you guys, you know, Molly came in, it's like, all right, I'm going to make this song a little bit better. Watch this. But again, it's all about the teamwork that a band is supposed to be a part of. You guys are a great example of a band dedicating themselves to teamwork. Excellent job, guys. Woo! Oh, Thank you very much. I know. I think. Uh, I don't know. I, th- I think what's the point of being a band if you're like not gonna like make everyone involved? You know what I mean? Like yeah. you know, yeah, I mean, 100%. obviously, I mean, like whoever kind of brings in the song kind of gets final say for everything. But like for the most part, but I mean, I, there's literally never been a single song where we've not all put something into it. Like it's yeah. just like that's what makes it 100%. sound like. I think we about. use the phrases. You're as much a part of this band as whoever the person that wrote the song mm-hmm. is. Or if that really bothers you, if that's gonna bother you more. Like there's something in it or one of us can't hear something or mm. like, oh, I really wanted that to be in it or I didn't, I want rid of that. We quite often bring it down to like, if that is going to bug you every time you hear it, yeah, then that's more important than how I feel about it. Yeah, so totally. that's, yeah, yeah. that's kind of like the ultimatum for most decisions yeah. in the band. It can become really hard because yeah. like we're, we're really good friends, but uh, sometimes disagreements happen. Sometimes. Um, but <laughs> a lot of the time. <laughs> Uh, we've got this agreement, but like it's just about just grinding yourself, be like, what's the best thing for the song? Plus, um, like, it's always about the music at the end of the day. It's like, yeah, 100%. it's thing like, I like to think with our band, like, you know, you can leave the egos at the door and stuff like that. And it's literally just about whatever makes the, the song good. So it doesn't matter if it, one person's come up with every idea. Or, I mean, it doesn't matter. Like, as long as the song's good, that's all. Like, you know, I mean, no one's going to hear Jake's terrible bridge that he wrote, but I really wanted the song. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Get rid of it. We're very brutally honest yeah, as well. Like, wow. we add, like someone like, oh, I might try like when I'm in the studio, like, oh, I might do like this instead. And you're <laughs> like, they're sitting there like, that's awful. Don't do that. Wow. <laughs> Shots <laughs> fired. Wow. <laughs> Damn. Or like can you do it again, but in key. <laughs> 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 yeah, we're brutal in this band, but like in the most loving yeah, way possible. Yeah, yeah. It's never like, no, like that was that. terrible. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's all, no, it's the best way to do it. Like, honestly, like we know it's always coming from like a loving place. Sometimes it's just a thing of like, if you beat around the bush too much, you get away from the actual point. Yeah. Absolutely. And just like being straight to the point. And we all know each other. We have conversations privately where like it all comes from like a place of love. And yeah, we just want to be honest with each other and make the best product that we can. I love how you guys just tied it all together right there. At the end of the day, it's always about the music. I think had you guys not known each other for a long time and you were being brutally honest, it would be a whole different situation. Like feelings would be much more hurt. You guys would take more personal, but you guys know that you're in this together. You're just trying to make it work and put out the best thing that you guys can at the end of the day. And it's so refreshing hearing that from you guys. It really is. Oh, good. Thank, Thank you. you. I know. At least, like, I don't know, say, like, we're all in music because we love music. So there's no point being, you know I mean, there's no point being, yeah, like, egotistical about it or whatever. Mm-hmm. It's just what's, like, just make a good song or as best as we can. And, like, I think as well, like, you're saying, like, because we're such good friends, like, that's the most important part. Like, um, that is, like, just the biggest part of our band. I think that's why it works so well. Well, even though you guys have been friends for a long time and you've been in the band for a while, would you say that also, kind of makes it hard as well when it comes to getting feedback or taking criticism like do you think it, it's also hard because you're friends at the same time or is it just oh no you're just used to getting feedback and criticism however you guys say it yeah we're so used to it i think by now yeah 100 percent. and like, like I, I do feel like also like 90 percent of what comes out of our mouth is we're just joking yeah like we have i posted a tiktok recently that text in the band chat oh, yeah. and one of them is i text you guys like oh, i need to have a chat with you about something tomorrow and you texted i hope i hope you're gonna tell us you're leaving the band <laughs> and i said oh yeah i'm going for a solo career and jake texts good luck getting someone to write all your songs for you <laughs> and then you text you'll need this and it was a link to how to use auto, auto, 
Dude, oh, yeah. on logic. <laughs> You're something else. I'll tell you that. You're something else. <laughs> Just... <laughs> At least you guys are comfortable with the way you joke with each other because other bands, it's like, what the hell did you say? And like fists start flying. But it's like, all right, listen, you know each other. You know how <laughs> all the personalities are. So, you know, it's all good. It works out in the end. So thank God for that. Ah, uh, God. Well, speaking of bands with longevity, Jake, you know what it's time to talk about, my friend. Hey. You already know. This is the big moment. Well, <laughs> one of the big moments. Listen, all right. So, Jake, we're going to talk about you performing with Green Day. First off, set the day for me. How did you feel leading up to it? And then when you got on stage, what, was, what were the first thoughts that popped into your head when you finally got on stage with Green Day? Tell me all about it, man. Well, the whole – so, obviously, Green Day are kind of, like, known for pulling people up on stage, like, a lot. Um and I've never done like made like a gig to take to a, made a gig made a sign to take to a gig before, um because I'm you know I'm not gonna be the carrying that around that's just annoying but this is like the one time I was like I'll just try it so yeah I made it but like, I honestly like never ever thought it would happen like ever especially to me like, I believe the worst luck ever so I was like there's not expecting anything ask you Molly. My sister, my girlfriend, we all went up, um, and my mom got sick that morning. So thankful, so we all went up, and like, yeah, I just held it up, and and Billy managed to see it somehow, and yeah, like literally the best day of my life. It was unbelievable. Still can't believe it. That's amazing because I'm a big Green Day fan myself. Like I've been listening to them for pretty much half my life, and when I saw the video appear in my feed. I just couldn't help but root for you, man. I'm like, that's the dream as a Green Day fan, just being pulled on stage to perform with them. Like, usually they would do it for Jesus of Suburbia, but you chose Dilemma, which I thought was really cool. So if you don't mind me asking, why Dilemma? It's just such a good song. Like, it's just <laughs> such a good song. Like, part of my process as well was, like, I figured, like, if I'd said, like, I can do basket case, it might not really stand out as much. So I was like, see if I pick a new song. That's like one of the best songs they've ever written. And then like, it's weird, that song, when they released that song, me and Ashley were like, I like text, I was like, you need to hear Green Day's new song. And he was like, I've listened to it. It's we're like buzzing about that song, like yeah. so much. Um, it's like one of my favorite songs they've ever written. Um, and I was like, maybe if I say Dilemma, it's like a new song. They need the promotion, obviously. Yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I was like, hopefully, maybe that will help. Uh, yeah, it'll stand out a little bit. So it worked. So it must have done. So yeah. I'm good. <laughs> I'm glad. So how has your life changed since performing with Green Day? I mean, the clip did go viral, obviously, but personally, what's been going on for the aftermath? It's just been such a surreal month. Like, honestly, like, I mean, the next morning um, I woke up and like my personal Instagram, which has only got like 10 things on it. I had like two and a half thousand followers when I woke up and I was like, what is going on? And I had, yeah, I didn't know that they like tagged me in it. Um, so then obviously I went on and then like, I seen it and I like, oh, it was just like, yeah. I mean, I didn't stop crying for about two weeks. Oh, it was yeah. just like, oh my God, just so surreal. And it like, it just kept being like, what it was obviously like, you know, just pulled up on stage. It was like, best thing ever. I was like, well, it's not going to get much better than that. And then America is my favorite album ever. So they played that in its entirety right afterwards. So I was like, right, well, I can't get better than that. <laughs> and then they posted it on all of their socials, tagged us. And then they all posted it on their personal one. And it just kept like going and going and going. And then yeah. all these people started finding Conflict Hope as well. And we've gone up like 3,000 followers or something. Like it's just nuts. And hundreds and, hundreds and hundreds of messages and comments. And yeah, it's just been so surreal. That's amazing because then the band is also getting some publicity too. You're getting new followers. I'm sure that helps out a lot too. It's like, all right, if you guys are in the area, come to a nearby show. We'll rock your faces off too. <laughs> Absolutely. I know it's been the, the best promo for our band. So thanks, Green Day. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Green Day getting um, their credit. That's funny. So, I know. I know. <laughs> so if you had advice to give someone who wants to perform with Green Day, Write on a sign that they want to play a new song. That's the best advice you can give them, right? Yes. It's actually funny. We've been getting so many messages like that, just random people. 
even moms and dads. Like, hey, my son's the biggest fan of Green Day. How can I get him up on stage with him? Like, how do I do it? Yeah, um, I know. I need to be charging for my service. Know, this right? is ridiculous. I know, I know. <laughs> you should um, honestly man you should make a shirt that says i'm that guy that played dilemma with green day <laughs> on this date bella house and park just like all the details yes i am jake from conflict hope blah 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 blah, blah. just a long shirt i said you know we're laughing because on our tiktoks and lives and our instagrams and stuff i'm just known as the green day guy yeah. you know like everyone's like who's the green day guy <laughs> the best thing to me. i'm like the biggest green day fan in the world so i was like come on i'm gonna change my name to that the green yeah. day guy dude that's amazing. Has anyone stopped you on the street saying, hey, aren't you that Green Day guy? Has that happened yet? A, a, a lot. Like, a lot. It's been mental. Really? It was on the Tuesday. And then we did like a... Was it a TikTok? Oh, and yeah. And then Molly was like, let's go to the pub and celebrate. So I was like, right, go so We went in and there was a guy who was sitting at the bar and he was like, it's the Green Day. <laughs> I was like, no. he was really drunk and happy. He was brilliant. So that was the first one. And it's... Yeah, but it's been like everywhere I've been going. Like, I mean, especially locally, obviously, people. Um, yeah. It's unbelievable. Oh, my God. You're kind of a local legend now. I hope you know that, man. <laughs> what can I say? Don't say that to him. Don't say that to him. Oh, no, no, no. I'm losing his ego. His ego. <laughs> I know. Shoot. I know, right? Damn it. <laughs> no, I'm so grateful. It's just been. It's been yeah. Just unbelievable. Like that's the, I obviously just never expected. It's the all the comments that've been especially like, overwhelming and the messages. Mm-hmm. Like I just didn't think anyone would care at all. Like <laughs> apart from my family, and then like obviously all these comments and stuff. It's just like I don't know. It just doesn't happen to people like me. So I'm very, very, very grateful. That's amazing. Listen, like I said before, I'm a massive Green Day fan. I was rooting for you the whole time. I was watching it. Couldn't help but smile because that's one of my dreams. But the fact that you got to live it, my friend, kudos to you. Seriously, and. uh I really hope that this band goes well for you guys throughout the rest couple of years. So I'm going to leave you with this last question for the three of you guys. What do you hope to accomplish within the next five years? I know it's kind of like an interview-ish question, like you're applying for a corporate job and you're like, oh, what's your short-term plan? But, you know, every band is different. What do you guys like really want to see happen within five years? I think one day it'd be nice to let Billy Joe come up on stage. <laughs> <laughs> Rain, you're gonna support us. Yeah. So, uh, Billy, if you're watching, five years from now, we'll catch up on this in park. I think, uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. Like, I don't even know. I, I think, like, we just want to write music that, like, at least for me, like, just to that is just like people enjoy. You know, like, I don't even necessarily have like a specific number in uh, in mind or anything. Like, I would love to do an album. That would be like a really good like yeah. thing we want to do. Um, and yeah, like we're, I just, I don't know. I just want to write music and hopefully people like it, you know, and, and I'm keeping my expectations low because um, oh. then the Green Day thing <laughs> happened and then it was like, yeah, yeah. Expected. so like, I don't want to, yeah, I just, I don't know. As long as you're you write so music. <laughs> I, I want know. a tour. <laughs> oh, Molly wants it all. Whoa. <laughs> I want money and more money. I want and writers. Fans. I want M&Ms. I want everything on the writer. I want Guinness. <laughs> Nah, tour album. Lamborghini. No, I can't drive, so we yeah. use <laughs> up the Lamborghini. Yeah. Nah, what do you think? For me, uh, I think, yeah, just, I think the goal has always been to do what we love for a living. Uh, so at the end of the day, if it's to play to like a couple hundred people uh, or whether it's to play to like a few thousand, it doesn't matter as long as we get to do what we love for a living and like positive positively affect people's lives yeah. then 100%. we'll be happy i know i will yeah, these guys are <laughs> <laughs> they don't say that word <laughs> sorry, sorry. Like each other. <laughs> what the hell guys? it's such a word no, like sorry. it's such a throwaway Cancel. word i know that's like a yeah. combo in scotland and, <laughs> like, yeah i know for real yeah i love how you guys just summarize it all there seriously guys thank you so much for doing this this was a blast you guys are so freaking funny oh my god <laughs> uh, thank you so, much. so so good like we're so nervous for this this has been like i mean like shaking in this like it's been so much fun so thank you so no, much for having us so much for having us it's felt very mm. natural absolutely yeah, thank you so if you want to come 
Yeah, well, hey, listen, if you guys happen to come by to the States, make sure you come to a state called New Jersey. I'll be here. I'll take you guys out. We'll have a good time, all right? I promise. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll do Giant Stadium. We won't catch you there. You'll be on the rider. Just yeah. be like Giant Stadium. Oh, that's where Joel lives nearby. Like, right there. Cool. We'll stop by. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll be there. Awesome. Well, much love, good vibes. Thank you guys again so much for hopping on the show. Thank you so much. Yeah, dude, anytime. Good luck with everything, and we'll definitely be in touch. We really will. Amazing. Thank That's you amazing. so much. Thank you. Hope you have a good day. Thank you.